What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here. I'm back with another Soprano log, and today we are looking at the fourth episode of the fourth season, The Wait. Now, this episode actually marks the halfway point of the entire series, uh, so I just wanted to thank you guys real quick for continuing to watch this, and I hope you'll stick with me through the other half of the series. Uh, it only gets better from here. Um, but this episode really revolves around, as the title would suggest, uh, the joke that Ralph made about Ginny Sack. In the episode No Show, he made a joke about Ginny having a 95-pound mole taken off her ass. Um, and John learned about this through Pauly, and he's incredibly pissed off about it. He's at a bar, and he sees one of Ralph's men there laughing. Now, he doesn't know what the kid is laughing about, but he thinks it's about the joke. So when the guy goes outside, he just beats the shit out of him and kicks him um, and ends up pissing on him, too. He ends up sending the kid to the hospital, and when Tony learns about this, he goes down to confront John. Uh, you know, John tells him that he knows about the joke. And, you know, Tony acts like he didn't hear the joke. Um, he's acting like he's, he was appalled by the joke. But um, in reality, he was laughing right alongside Ralph. Uh, so a complete hypocritical uh, move on Tony's part. Um, but John, you know, loves his wife. He cannot stand the idea of her being made fun of, especially because uh, she works so hard dieting um, and trying to lose weight. Um, so it really hurts John to hear this. But Tony convinces John to hear Ralph out. You know, they've all known each other forever and to give him the benefit of the doubt and at least let him explain himself um, before he goes and does anything um, against Ralph. Uh, when Ralph returns from Miami, um, he meets with his men and he actually tells them that it was Janice who wanted to, uh, you know, stick a dildo up his ass um, when in reality that's what he wanted. Um, but he's telling them this in case, you know, Janice mentions something. If, if it ever gets out, he has plausible deniability. And he could say that, no, 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 Janice is the one lying about that. Uh, but he's trying to protect his reputation. But Tony has Ralph call John, and he specifically tells him not to apologize, to just deny everything. Um, because he doesn't want Ralph to admit guilt, because that will just make things worse. So Ralph tries talking to John and tries, you know, denying it. Um, but he, he ends up offering to apologize um, which makes no sense because he's still insisting that he didn't do it um, but again this just pisses John off like Tony knew it would and now the situation's even worse than when they started. John wants Carmine to arrange a hit against uh, Ralph. Uh, Carmine refuses because Ralph makes a lot of money for all of them you know he's in charge of the Esplanade project um, and Carmine is really focused on the money. He's not willing to have Ralph killed over just an insult like this. So instead, they arrange for a sit-down with all the parties. Meanwhile, Carmela continues to bond with Furio. You know, he's Tony's driver, so he always comes over to the house, and they talk and have coffee. She actually goes to visit him at his new house, and she brings AJ along with her, I think, to stop something from happening. She knows that she's incredibly attracted to him, and the idea of the two of them being alone together, you know, something could happen. So she brings AJ along as protection to make sure that she doesn't go too far. Um, but we can see that when Furio is talking to her, you know, and describing Italy and things like that, she is just completely 100% into this guy. You know, he's a much different person than Tony is. He's sensitive. He's sweet, good looking. Um, so we can see why Carmela likes him. Tony and Silvio go to meet with Carmine and John. Um, they actually have Junior on the phone because he's under house arrest. And they discuss the joke that Ralph made. John wants to have Ralph killed because of the comment. And he insists that, you know, that's their tradition. Like, that's the rule. If someone disrespects him, he has a right to avenge his honor. But they're more focused on the money. And they refuse to give Ralph up unless he can offer proof and give up his source, which John refuses to do. So at the end, Carmine, again, refuses to authorize the hit. Um, but he's worried that John might go through with the hit anyway and just not listen to him. So he actually gives Tony permission later to have John killed. You know, that's how much the money is important to him. He's willing to sacrifice his underboss, you know, to maintain the peace. Tony sends Silvio and Christopher to go talk to these old gangsters from Rhode Island. At least one of them is like blind and the daughter is blind. It's just this really creepy, off-putting um, scene where they go to talk to this guy. And these old men, you know, are offering to basically hold John down and cut off his head with a hacksaw. Um, but, you know, Silvio <laughs> does not really want that. He wants something more low-key. Um, so they agree to arrange a hit um, when John comes into town to visit his father. 
Uh, meanwhile, though, John arranges his own hit on Ralph. Ralph has gone down to Miami to avoid all this trouble. Um, and so John arranges for a hitman to go kill Ralph while he's down there. However, before he can leave town to go visit his father, um, he goes back home and he sees that his wife is in the basement eating candy. So he realizes that she's been cheating on her diet this whole time. And that makes him realize that he doesn't have to do this grand gesture to defend her honor. That's because he thought that she was making all this effort. And that's why it really hurt him to joke. But when he realizes that she's not putting a lot of effort into dieting, you know, he calls off the hit. And the hitman they send is this Asian guy. He's actually pretty cool looking. Um, and he stares Ralph down in the elevator when they're together, basically just saying, like, you don't know how lucky you are. I was like an inch away from killing you. But interesting uh, little side character right there. Um, but John later talks to Tony and agrees to put the insult behind him and to just move on. And the last little story beat happening in this episode is uh, Furio has a housewarming party now that he's moved into his new home. He ends up dancing with Carmela after, you know, Tony kind of refuses to dance or do anything. Um, and we can see the bliss on Carmela's face as she's dancing with him. This is like her dream come true. Um, and then later, Tony uh, buys Carmela a dress and they end up, you know, having sex. And while they're having sex, Carmela hears the music that she was dancing with to Furio. And this, you know, is an indication that she's, you know, fantasizing about Furio and thinking about him while she's having sex with Tony. So, um, yeah, we can see that her feelings for him are continuing to develop. And we'll see where that goes next episode. But that was The Wait. So let me know your favorite Ginny Sack joke in the comments. And stay tuned for the next Soprano Log, coming soon. Special thank you to my patrons for keeping my fat ass in Devil Dogs. Hunter, Tommy Smith, Abdallah Alamari, George Jones, Russell, Sean, Graham, Rooftop, Rico Bellic, Heart of Markness, Broccoli, Isaiah, Placenta Juan, and Logan.